In this video, I'm going to try and show you an example of an older home that would be using a roof purlin and some braces to redistribute the weight of the rafters or the roofing a little more evenly. If you just had these rafters without the braces, you would probably end up with a big sag. So this was a real common method of framing. And uh, when I started out in the early days, we did this every once in a while, but kind of got away from it. The engineers redesigned the lumber, you know, uh, on an older home. And I actually, this is what I drew in here. This is all two by four. Um, and uh, there is actually two inch by four inch lumber. I'm going to try and make a few more videos to give you some ideas of things you can do with older homes or some problems you might run into. That's why I drew this. And of course, uh, there was a someone was interested about uh, they wanted to see if they could remove these. And uh, this person wasn't the first person. I've actually received quite a few requests for this over the years. Now, the supports should be on a bearing structure a wall or a beam and then of course the weight should be able to transfer down um, to something so this is this uh, floor support beam is located in the center of the house same as the beam and the wall above so all of your purlin braces need to go uh, need to run from the roof to a bearing wall they are not supposed to go on a non-bearing wall even though We've done it plenty of times um, in the past. So I guess that'd be a big no-no, right? Okay, here's the brace. And underneath the brace, or I should say the brace would attach to the purlin. This is actually the purlin. These are the braces. And we used to just nail a two by four onto the brace. And it would look something like this, you know, put a few nails in it here, maybe about four nails, three to three or four nails into the rafter and a couple of nails into the from the purlin into the brace. And then we would brace it off to a bearing wall or a beam load bearing wall or a load bearing beam, something like this. And of course, these you could put a couple of uh, nails into the ceiling joist and a couple of toenails into the wall. And uh, I would imagine that would be sufficient. And again, I'm just going off of what I used to do. Things what this is a common method for roof purlins. So I'm going to put a link at the end of the video now that you got a general understanding of uh, roof purlins, purlins and how they um, work, what they're for. Um, like I said, they are there to redistribute the load a little more evenly, um, you know, and to prevent the lumber from sagging. So this was a real common method used years ago, but it really doesn't seem to be used as much today. I think engineers have went to larger lumber sizes and stuff like that. But it's not a bad bad uh, method of construction here. Any modifications, I might have said this already, any modifications you make to the structure wouldn't be a bad idea to contact a structural engineer. But for those of you who don't, um, do it at your, all modifications at your own risk. Now, the reason why I made this video, and I'm going to put a couple of more videos in here, or at least one more, I'm going to attach it to this one, is that uh, they wanted to know what the person asking the question wanted to know if they could remove the purlin system, beef up the floor, and um, figure out a way to get some more room so that they could utilize the attic. And that's actually what I'm going to do. I'm going to do another video, and there will be a link here at the end of this video if you want more information on that.